Hello everyone, in this video we will see the problem Prime Generator on Spots Ok, so here is the problem PD wants to generate some prime numbers for his crypto system Help him, your task is to generate all prime numbers between two given numbers The input begins with the number of T The number T of test cases in a single line In each, so T is less than or equal to 10 in each of the next t lines, there are two numbers m and n, and m is less than or equal to n, and it is less than or equal to, and n is less than or equal to 10 to the power 9. And the difference between n and m is 10 to the power 5. So basically, it means that uh, the range between which we want to find the prime numbers is less than 10 to the power 5. And we have around 10 test cases. And for each test case, we need to print all the prime numbers between the numbers M and N, including both M and, M and N. So like here's the sample input. So two is the number of test cases. And we need to print all the prime numbers between one and 10. So here they print two, three, five, and seven. Because these are the only prime numbers between 1 and 10. And between 3 and 5, we only have 3 and 5 as primes. Now remember that we are including both 3 and 5. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Let us see what are the ways to check if a number is a prime. So, the, the, the most uh, easy approach to check if a given number is prime is to just check if a number is prime or not in order of square root of n. Uh, if you want to check if a number n is prime, you can check it in order of square root of n by checking all the numbers, uh, whether they are divisible, whether they are factors of the given number n. Uh, and uh, so basically we check all the numbers less than square root of n and check if they are factors of n. So you, you all must be knowing this approach so but uh, we can figure out that it won't work in this problem because here the numbers m and n are very large they are up to the order of 10 to the power 9 so the square root of this would be around 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 4 okay so to check if a given number is prime the complexity comes to be 3 into 10 to the power 4 which is around square root of 10 to the power 9 and uh, we'll have to check in worst case 10 to the power 5 such numbers because the range is 10 to the power 5 and we have around 10 test cases so this comes to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 3 into 10 to the power 10 so clearly this approach won't work okay Now, okay, so, so I want to make a statement here that every composite number less than n has a prime factor less than square root of n. So this statement is very important in solving this problem and I would like you to pause for a minute. You can pause this video and think why this is correct. Okay, now I'll tell you why this is correct. So basically, every composite number have at least. Uh, so, so by the definition of composite number, it will have a factor other than one and n. So it will have one more factor of it, one more prime factor of it. So it will have at least one prime factor of it which is not the number itself and one and, and uh, yeah so so the composite numbers in its prime in its prime factorization have more than one term so basically you know that nine is a prime number nine is a composite number so it has three into three as its prime factorization so it has two terms any composite number would have more than or equal to two terms in its prime factorization so, uh, so the statement was every composite number less than 
less than n other prime factor less than square root of n so we prove this by contradiction let us say that there is no prime factor of it which is less than square root of n it means that it it has at least two factors because it is a composite number and both of them are more than square root of n if both of the factors are prime factors are more than square root of n then their product would be more than n which can't happen because these are the prime factorization of n so we can say that the statement is all true and our assumption was wrong and we have proved this by contradiction okay so if you want to check if a number n is prime to check if a number n is prime it's sufficient to check divisibility with numbers less than with prime numbers so to check if a number n is prime it's sufficient to check divisibility with prime numbers less than square root of n if it divides any number which is prime and less than square root of n then it is not the, the number n is not a prime number otherwise it definitely is so like you just to think i would like you guys to think this yourself yeah so this works this is correct and based on this we solve this problem so i'll tell you how we solve this problem so so to check if a number of the order n to the power 9 is prime we need to have all the primes less than square root of n computed so let us say this is the limit on the number n which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Okay. Now I also store its square root. Okay. So we just need to compute all the prime numbers less than square root of n first. So I'll compute all the prime numbers which are less than square root of n. even actually we don't need all the prime numbers less than square root of n we can just check yeah to check if a number n is a prime it's sufficient to check the limit with prime numbers less than square root of n even we check with all numbers less than square root of n it's fine because they would anyway include all the prime numbers less than square root of n so i i won't even do a c there okay so the solution goes like First test can be <coughs> now. i will iterate on all the numbers from 2 to square root of n and i will cancel out all the all their uh, factors yes so basically let us say i take a an order map and in, the, in this i will mark all the numbers which are composite as 1 so what i do here is i start with the first factor of i which is more than n and i proceed till m okay so what is the first factor of i which is just more than n so if n divides i it is just i 
if n does not divide i uh, so we just take the series and put it n plus i minus 5 plus i here we are taking the ceiling of n upon i and then, then we multiply it by i to get the next factor of i in this. So this gives the, the first factor of i which is more than or equal to n. And we also take need to take a maximum with Because the number i itself cannot be a composite number. So we start with at least 2i or the number just more than n more than or equal to n which is a multiple of i. For n j equal to start j is less than less than equal to m and we do j equal to j plus i. So we start with the first, we start with the factor of i and then we increment it by i to get the next factor of i and we keep on doing it until we reach it. And these all are composite numbers so we mark them as composite, composite of j equal to 1. So in the end all the numbers which are marked composite are not prime numbers so we only print the numbers which are not marked composite. If composite set count of i equal to equal to zero, it means that the number did not come in the map. We print it. You also print a new line after the end of a test case. And I think this should work. So I have a lot of compilers in here. At least this is not in command. This is this compiled now. I run it to one to ten. So it says that one is also prime number because it is not a composite. So I need to check if composites of i is equal to zero and i is not equal to one. Two three five seven three five three five. So the program works correctly. I'll upload the tense pause and I'll explain the time comes to give the solution after that. So the code got ex accepted in time 0 0.10. There are better approaches to it. Remember there are better approaches to it, but I'm just solving it in the with the approach, which works just fine. Okay, now looking at the time coming to solution. Hmm. So actually there is no pre-processing at all. We are not pre-computing any primes. Whenever we get a test case, we cancel out factors of all the numbers 
from 2 to square root which come in this range n to m. So I'll explain the time from complex regular solution. So let us say so for a for a particular test case. Let us say the difference m minus n is called range, which is 10 to the plus 5. Now, let us say when i equal to 2. When i equal to 2, we can cancel out all of its factors in this range. So, it would have range upon two factors. When i equal to 2, in a particular range whose length is range, the number of factors of it would be range upon 2. When i equal to 3, it would have range upon 3 number of factors. When i equal to 4, it would have range upon 4 number of factors. And this goes on to range upon square root of uh, the limit n, which is 10 to the power, 10 to the power 9. Or basically, it is, just, it is just square root of n. Yeah. So this is nothing but harmonic series and it is just less than so like 1 upon n plus 2, 2 upon n plus 3 upon n till n upon n is nothing but n log n. So if we take the range common it becomes 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 till 1 upon square root of n. So this is nothing but log of square root of n. And we multiply it with range. Because we took that com we took range common from here to get this. So time complexity of Time complexity of a given test case is range, which is actually a minus n into log of square root of n, which is 10 to the power 9. Uh, so this is the time complexity for a given particular test case, and which is just fine to make the solution work. So I already uploaded this relation on Podge and it got accepted. So I'll see you guys in the next problem we solve on my channel. Goodbye.